well, when people come in for a reading, they don't often know what to expect. And some people are, are scared. And I'll say to them, because I set my intention in front of them so they understand who I am and what I'm about. But I, the ones that say I'm a little scared, I will tell them at no time will my head spin around. I promise you I will not spit pea soup. I only deal in love and light. No negative energy is going to come in. Archangel Michael is so protective of me that nothing negative is going to come through. This is a healing session. That's how I set my intention. I was in sales for years. And that was like my whole mind thing was, um, maybe I'm selling these people. Maybe, maybe I'm just reading their body language. And then I realized, well, if I'm reading their body language, how am I getting their mom's name? How am I getting how they passed? How, you know, it's, it's that human mind that, that it, it's hard to wrap your head around the coincidences. And there's no coincidences. Right. My name is Stacy Needenthal. Um, I have an online presence of connecting to spirit with Stacy. I'm a psychic medium. I'm a spiritual healer. I'm a shaman. I'm a child of God. And my goal, my prayer is that God, that spirit, that angels through me will help heal those who come and um, sit down with me. You know, it's one of those things where we're all searching and wanting to know what's in the spiritual realm. And I'm able to bring that forth. And John Holland says it best. I don't know if you're familiar with John Holland. He's a, a pretty well-known psychic medium where he says it comes from spirit, through spirit, to spirit. And I love that because it's not me. I'm just, I'm just the conduit. I'm just the one who's relaying the message. So that's kind of what I do. Um, I am an energy healer as well, where I'll, you know, I work on people who have some energy blocks or dealing with depression or anxiety, but my main modality is mediumship. I think it's a great thing that you're doing um, this, this type of, of work because there's so much spirituality out there that people just don't know about. It could, it, it's right. one of those things sometimes that it's like, if you ever talk to a spiritualist, you know, where people kind of whisper about it, but the more we speak right. about it, the more common it is. It's, you know what, it's just one of those things that I truly believe during this pause that we've been placed on for the last couple months, I feel like spiritually we were able to clean out some of the stuff in our heads and in our spirit and work through. And I believe that so many people are waking up to what the spiritual realm is right now. Um, and they're looking for answers and they're looking for people to help them through it. Well, words of advice are always trust your instinct, trust your inner knowing. That small little voice in your head, it's never wrong. It's never wrong. It's guiding you in some direction. Um, if you don't meditate, I would meditate a lot. And after yeah. you're done meditating, when I say a lot, it's one of those things where you get up in the morning and you take a shower and you kind of just, you know, you get in touch with your breath. Somewhere in the middle of the day, you feel like you're getting anxious. You get in touch with your breath. It's just slowing down. It's not kumbaya for three hours, you know. It can be, but it's just getting in touch with your breath. Um, and when you meditate, slowing sure. the mind down in the morning or even before you go to bed at night. And it's trusting that you know that you know that you know. And if you don't know, you will know it when you need to know it. You just have to trust it. You're not wrong. That's one of the biggest things when, when students ask me to mentor them, the first thing I tell them is you don't need, really need me. You don't need a mentor. You just have to listen and believe and trust. Validate. I probably have 20 journals back here of different types of validations. When you start being an intuit or when you start psychically saying things or writing things down, you doubt yourself two or three weeks down the road. Well, then you can go back to the book and go, oh my gosh, I had this woman in front of me. Her mom's name was Isabella and I got it. That, that's not a coincidence. 
Now, um, as far as the cards, how exactly does that work? So I, I've gotten a couple of readings using cards, and I must say I've always been pretty floored by the results. I mean, it's 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 right on the money. Um, what's the idea behind that? How does how does that work? Well, the idea behind that is we all have angels around us. And, and messages come from our angels that we don't necessarily pay attention to. So this just kind of um, reassures people that their angels are around them and that that inner voice within ourself, a lot of times is our higher self and our angels giving us small nudges or big nudges um, for that matter. Um, we've all, when we're born, we're, we're born with guardian angels and angels. And sometimes we have certain teams around us. Let's say, um, let's say you, you have health issues all the time. You may have a healing team that's around you. And if you're not calling on your healing team to help you heal, you may deal with the, a sickness in your body that can be healed through the mind, through your angels and through meditation. The mind can heal the body. And when you connect with your angels and you do what they tell you to do, or you listen better, it makes a big difference. Those synchronicities that you're seeing, 111, 222, 330, those synchronicities that you're seeing, they might be your guides. And my, the angels will tell me, tell her 333. I'm like, you're seeing 333 a lot. Yes, I am. That's your angels. They're letting you know that they're around. So that's how the angels come into it as well. Um, Angels are a little more difficult, I guess, for people to believe in than um, their loved ones that have passed because they know their loved ones that have passed. So I could describe someone's father to a T, <coughs> excuse me, and they'll say, yep, yep, that's my dad. But when I say, oh, I've got Archangel Michael here and he's saying this, you know, they don't necessarily understand that. But if I can give those them validations of certain things that have happened, then they're like, oh my gosh, I know that. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this. Is this like a skill that you've had your whole life or is it something you fell into or that something that the skies kind of open up and then all of a sudden you were like, aha, um, this is what all this is, is about. It, kind of a yes to all of that. <laughs> probably about 10 years ago, probably about 10 years ago i started having massive panic attacks i was having 13 13 15 20 panic attacks a day when I, mean, I couldn't go outside i couldn't stay inside i would sit between my husband's legs on the floor and i'd have him put his hands on my shoulders because i felt like i was leaving my body ticking clocks made it feel like the end of the looney tunes cartoon that the world was coming in on me um, I felt like my, my tongue was swelling or someone was choking me. I felt like, you know, like we would go somewhere and I felt like I was dodging people, but nobody was coming towards me. And I went to my doctor, um, which I am not a person that goes to the doctor a lot. So, you know, he knew something was up and I told him, you know, I either have Alzheimer's or dementia or schizophrenia because weird stuff's happening to me. And I remember him looking at me going, you're 45 years old, you do not have dementia. And I'm like, something's freaking happening. And he put me on med, you know, and I went to a counselor and did that whole regiment and it calmed things down a little bit, but it didn't totally take it away. And my mom got sick in April, six years ago. Um, and was diagnosed with lung cancer. And she passed in June. Um, Monday was her six year anniversary of her passing. And oh, after she okay. passed, my daughter and I went to a medium. And afterwards, the medium pulled me to the side and she said, you know, you could do exactly what I'm doing. And I'm like, no. And she said, you're having panic attacks. I feel like you're your throat's closing. You can't listen. Like she was telling me all, everything that was happening to me. And she said, wow, spirit is knocking on your door hard. You either need to open up or to shut down because until you do, 
they're going to be making driving you crazy. And I thought I was going crazy. Um, so I had a long conversation with God, basically born and raised in the church. So doing this, I was taught was wrong. And I basically said to God, look, if this is what you want me to do. You've got to give me signs. And he started lining people up and putting signs in front of me that it was inevitable. I always, my prayer is always that each and every one of us, that we are living the life we love and we're loving the life we live. If not, we're the only ones that can change it. So that's what my goal is to help people live the life that they love and love the life that they live. When I do energy se se sessions, Raphael is with me. When I do when I do a reading, when I set my intention, when I say my prayer, I ask that Michael come in to protect me. Archangel Gabrielle come in to give me the speech, the things that I need to say um, for my sitter to understand. I don't necessarily need to understand them, but I want the, sit, the person, my client to understand. And there's times I'll just go, whatever angels, whatever archangels, whatever spirit guides need to be here with me to give me this message, I'm inviting all of you. Just come and help me. When someone sets an appointment with me, I take their, their full name, the month and the day of their birth. I don't need the year. I like to have the month and the day. Um, and then a half hour before they come, I meditate on their, their name and their date of birth. And what that does is that allows me to connect with their spirit here. Um, and I will pull a medicine card on them. And the medicine card just kind of tells me where they're at in their world right now. Um, and then I pull um, angel cards on them and I do a past, present, future, their path and their challenge. Again, I want to be able to connect with their energy so that when spirit comes through for them, I can feel the connection. And the angel cards just lets me know what, what the angels are telling them um, that happened in their past that maybe they need to bring back, what's happening right now what's coming in, what the path is, and then what their challenge is, you know, so what they're kind of struggling with. A lot of times forgiveness comes up in that challenge card, which makes sense. We all have problems with, with forgiveness. Generally, by the time I finish doing the angel cards, that's when spirit comes through to me. Sometimes people will say to me, I really want to talk to, you know, and they'll give me a name. So if they give me that person's name and a picture of them, what I'll do is I meditate on that particular person a half hour before they come in. So that way I know pretty much for sure I can bring that person through, that spirit through.